Welcome back. So, savoury scones, hopefully you have had a go at. If you go over to our YouTube channel, that's Leslie's Kitchen, Bread School. Uh, if you like, share, uh, press the bell for any announcements and you can watch the whole video in real time. Nine minutes, 54 seconds, just in case Facebook or Instagram cut you off. These are the ones that are just out the oven and basically that is your cheese scones. Now, I did take a picture as well. You will notice that the big baker's one is pretty big. <laughs> That will be David's, I'm sure. So back to thank you. Back to sweet scones, okay? Now sweet scones, simple again. Self-raising flour, double cream. We need a wee cutter and some diet lemonade, okay? And any fruit of your choice. I'm just going to use these chili and flame raisins. Um, I really, really like um, cherry with flaked coconut. I love ginger, stem ginger put through it. Um, you can do anything you want. If you love cranberries, cranberries and orange zest in a, a scone is absolutely delicious. Lemon, lime, you can use any citrus peel in there as well, just grate it in. This is about making it simplistic, okay? The only other thing you need other than the three ingredients in your fruit is we need an egg okay so i've put an egg already in here and that's just for the egg wash at the end so all i'm doing is giving it a wee mix now and i'm going to show you a wee trick this is the salt okay put a pinch of salt two tons of salt in there you might be wondering why i would put salt into an egg wash that's for something that's sweet what it will do is create a glaze similar to what you get when you do a croissant or a brioche dough and you egg wash the salt actually enhances that lovely glaze okay so i've got a little pastry brush as well just ready for that after so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to measure out 350 grams of self-raising flour okay so 350 grams of self raising so not cups in this one you've got everything in gram weight and again just go and get the recipes i'll also put them on to the youtube channel so i'm five grams over one under so 350 when it decides it's going to turn there we go 350 grams okay so fruit is just going in and i'm just going to use what's left in the packet I'm going to put my jug back on the scales and zero it. So most of you'll know I always use a weighted measure rather than doing it by eye. So the next thing I'm going to do is 150 grams of double cream. Now I've got long life double cream, which is fine. You can use fresh double cream, obviously. Um, I couldn't get hold of some, but double cream, not single cream for this. It's really important because what we've not got, I've just got three grams more to go. One gram. There we go. Um, double cream is incredibly important in this for the one simple reason. We're not using egg in the mix. We're not using any sugars in the mix. And we're not using butter. So that is our fat content, okay? So we require that. Diet lemonade is my favourite, this one, because I like the flavour. But the lemonade is adding the effervescence again, the, yet again. I'm gonna say effervescence all day long because I like the word. Um, <laughs> so basically, this um, is adding the lift, okay? And it adds the sweetness. Now, obviously, we're not adding sugar to that, but we have got naturally occurring sugars within the fruit. So I'm going to do, it's a really odd number for this one, it's 188 grams, okay? So 188. And can I tell you, when you're pouring from a big bottle, it comes really, really quickly. So if you go over, just use a spoon and take anything out, okay? So really important. And that's me, okay? So you'll notice it's increased quite a bit with bubbles. That's, that's the like, effervescence. That's the effervescence. So I've got my Swedish dough hook again, but you can have a wooden spoon. <clears> and all I'm gonna do is just pour it in okay and then same as i did with the savory scones now you might notice this one can sometimes be a little bit more liquidy it 
hopefully isn't too wet but you'll see this one's a little wetter than the cheese the cheese tends to suck up a little bit now what you can do is if you feel it's too wet and you're going to be saying well how do you know if it's too wet we don't want dropping consistency okay that consistency is absolutely fine but if it was falling off the actual um wooden spoon or that it is too wet okay so same as before all i'm going to do is put down a little bit of flour for it to sit on and a little bit at the side for my hands okay so out it comes and just using my fingers just to take off any excess okay and this time i've actually got my baker's buddy so it's organized a little bit better so anything that's left there okay we'll just set that to the side now you can just do the same as before hands in and just give it a wee turnover okay just two or three times so as you're happy with the shape okay and we're just going to take it down to about two and a half centimeters you might find somebody will say that's not two and a half centimeters but it's an my, inch. my old cutter so you're going to just pop it in and then straight in okay so don't worry again about lifting them out we're not twisting that's also incredibly important no twisting of your cutter because what you'll find is i might get one there if i'm very lucky might yep so if you twist the cutter what happens is you find that the actual scone goes off at an angle so I'm just going to grab my baking tray, fresh one. I've got baker's parchment sitting already on it, okay? So again, I pull the dough away rather than lifting the scones out as I go. I just pull the dough out the way. Now, if it's a wee bit sticky, you can just give it a wee turn to take it out from there, okay? Sometimes you'll find there's little sticky bits in it. So again, just pulling the dough away. So you get hold of the actual scone. That one's got a little bit extra there. It shouldn't have. So if you've got some stuck on your work surface, just use your baker's buddy to just pull it back together, okay? And again, just reshape it until you're happy. You might have to work this a little bit more, but again, it's about being really light. Try not to be heavy handed with this, okay? Because we don't want to end up with heavy scones okay it's really important we have really nice light scones now again just possibly get maybe one or two more out of this and again every time you'll notice i'm always putting my cutter into the flour before i cut it's so important because otherwise if it sticks it really isn't that nice now that's a little bit too small um to go back into the cutter so all i'm going to do is just kind of roll it round a bit and again that's that's the runt of the pack shall we say now if you've got a lot of rubbish on your hands just grab a little bit of flour and just give them a wee rub off okay so again you can just rub anything that's on your hands off before you go to doing the next stage so all i'm going to do is just throw everything that's a bit messy at the moment so I'll just clear that out the way so you can see everything okay and i'm just going to bring that back here now my egg wash with my little pastry brush and you're just going to put it across the top now some people like to go down the edges i find if you go down the edges sometimes that also can change the scones direction so i just always just paint the top now i would sometimes put um pearl sugar on the top, that is the Italian sugar. Not today. Um, not today though, I'm afraid, because we've got none left because it's all been sucked up off the floor. Um, so you can do that, which just adds this lovely little bit of crunch to the top. But today it's just a little egg wash. So again, anytime if you've got egg wash left over, use it for another baking project rather than having to throw it out. So that, I'm happy with those, okay? And these are not massively big scones. They're not huge. 
Um, you want to leave, some people will say that they should be all very close together and thereby they will um, rise better. But over the years of doing this, if you have them all together, sometimes they're still far too doughy inside. So I like to still space mine out and just hope, you know, that each time, as long as you've not twisted, they will lift up straight. So 200 degrees, and these are going in for 12 to 15 minutes. Now, the reason I put a variance on that is everybody's ovens are different. So you must go with what your oven works. So if you're not sure, put 12 minutes on and check and then go back and just put a minute on thereafter. So mine are going in now, 200 degrees, middle shelf, in the go, 12 minutes. I don't put a timer on, that's just because I go backwards and forwards to look at it. Hopefully, you're gonna have some savory scones today, you're gonna have some sweet scones, so you're gonna have a, a lovely weekend of baking. Um, look forward to seeing you all again soon. Please, please like and share Facebook, Instagram, and especially our YouTube channel, okay? See you all soon, bye.